Welcome to Leadership Moments. In every great leader's life, there are pivotal moments that shape their character, test their resilience, and awaken their vision. Together, we'll uncover the invaluable lessons hidden within these transformative moments. The last month, the United States hit an all-time high of layoffs since 2009. Over 84,000 jobs alone in one month. Now, some of you may recall that 2009 was during the economic crisis. The cause of this today is for many reasons. One, you know, you've got companies restructuring and technological advancements are changing the types of skills companies need within their organization. And these have mostly been in the technology and financial sectors. However, other sectors are impacted as well, including manufacturing, energy, education, You know, Stacey, even you and I have had very intimate experiences with this recently as well. Yeah, that's right, Tracy Ann. You know, with this large volume of layoffs, I believe that many of our listeners have either been impacted in some way or know of someone that has been as well. This makes me wonder what these leaders are doing to prepare their team members who are impacted. One of my leadership core principles, as you know, is love your team members. And this principle is meant to remind me that when you truly care about someone, you will do anything for them. Although I may not love my team members like I love my family members or a close friend, but by loving them, I am caring for them with their careers, their livelihoods, and their lives. And when leaders do this, especially amid layoffs, it can be extremely powerful. You can change a tough situation into a hopeful one. That's exactly right. I just experienced this myself when the company that I worked for was acquired and we were the acquiree. Since it was a merger, I was fortunate enough to have a little bit of notice of what was coming. And you know, Stacey, you talk about caring about your team members and that is exactly what I did. I wanted to set them up for success in the next role that they may be placed in at the current organization or had to find their next job. So I reached out to my network. We set up training sessions every single week for a total of four weeks. These included resume writing skills, the best way to do your job search, interview skills, how to set up a strong social media profile for companies to find you, and just other confidence-boosting inspirational discussions. When you talk about this, Tracy, and it seems so obvious to take on these steps as a leader, yet I don't hear companies or leaders doing this on a regular basis. I had a similar situation with helping my team members as well. Now, in this instance, the entire organization did provide some of those services for team members to assist them in finding their new roles. For example, the resume writing and the job searching skills you also did. You know, when you are a leader, you're not just a leader for your team when it's convenient. We are doing a workshop around the country right now. And it's on these characteristics of resilient leadership. One of them is leaning in. When we are leaders, we have to always be proactive, look at what's happening in the future and help our teams through that. And that means situations like this. True leaders lead for all the team members all of the time. Not just when team members report to them and once they don't, you're done. You have a responsibility to help move them forward. And in fact, you know, I try and keep in touch with as many of them as possible, just checking in, how they're doing, how's everything going. And for those that may still be trying to look for for roles, is there anything that I can do to help them? That, That is our role as leaders. I totally agree. And I love that. It could be weeks or months after the event, and you're still checking in with those people because you're loving those team members. It's beautiful. In my recent experience, my entire senior leadership team, we took it upon ourselves to find new roles for all of our team members that were impacted with the restructure. Now, all of us senior leaders were also impacted, but we aligned and put our team members first. We leveraged our experience and knowledge of the parent and the sister companies, along with our peer relationships, 
And we literally went one by one to help place every team member on the team. We had a very small window to do it, but by banding together, we got it done. And it wasn't until we finished with our team members that we started looking for ourselves. You know, Stacey, you and your leadership team need to really be commended for that. That to me is true leadership. I was speaking with a client the other day and they told me of a time where very similar situation of knowing that large teams were going to lose their jobs and it was known by everyone. But they noticed that no one was thinking about what to do after the time expired for this transition. They took it upon themselves to listen, connect with leaders in the parent and sister companies that were not impacted, and then put a list together of all the team members that were impacted and said, now, this is the chance to go and try something different and just see what happens. It was a win-win because these leaders received help on things they didn't previously have people to do, and the team members had nothing to lose to try and learn a new skill set while waiting for their time as a team member to expire. As a result, to everyone's surprise, they ended up placing 100% of those team members in new roles before the time ended. That is amazing. I love hearing those stories. It's such a great example of leading for all team members all the time. Now, we both agree that many companies and leaders don't do this enough during times of change, as we've been talking about. And sometimes there are leaders that may be caught up in their own emotions, so it fogs their focus, and they are not always thinking clearly. And sometimes they may even withdraw completely. Now, I've also noticed that when organizational environments are less transparent and they tend to lack in communication across the organization and even the leadership team, this also occurs this leaves some leaders not acting because they don't truly understand what is going on. I think that's a really good point. So let's try to help leaders with this now. If your organization is going through an acquisition, a merger, downsizing, or even upsizing, it is your responsibility to ask a lot of questions so that you can prepare your teams. Now, You may not get all of the answers you need or you want, but sometimes what is not said is also telling you what to do. Prepare for all scenarios, even if you don't have the clarity. You know, the way to look at this is what are the scenarios? What are the options? There are always options. And once you identify the options, you can put them a plan together to help your team understand what the options are for them and start preparing for the best case scenario and the worst case scenario, and then help them thinking through what they need to do to prepare for the best and for the worst. Right. Prepare, but be careful to not worry or scare your team. Set the tone how change is constant help yourself and your team members embrace the change and prepare for it. In the acquisition example, they could be moved to another team within their current function. They could be moved to another team that is not in their current function. Or the third option, they could either leave by choice or not. Once they have these options on the table, now they can prepare for them. The best case is option one, different team, same function, And the worst case is that they have to leave. Now to prepare them, you could have them list 20 companies that they would like to work for. Then ask them to actively reach out to their networks to start creating connections. By preparing your team for the worst, you're actually already preparing them for the best scenario as well. The point is you are giving them options. And where there are options, there is hope. And it is reminding your team that they are in control of their career and they don't have to wait to be told what the end result is before they act. You can be strategic in weaving in career direction, passion, and desires during your one-on-ones with them. You really should be doing this already. And I hope that you are. 
Then when you know what is a potential best next step for your team members, you can start providing them opportunities. For example, maybe offering them some new training or working on a special project to get exposure to a different team or skill set. You can also start talking to trusted peers about potential options for them. The point is, even if you don't have all of the information, you can always be doing something to help prepare your team members. Yeah, Stacey, absolutely. I would also add, stay tuned until the end. Meaning, once you believe you placed your team members in new roles or you've given them the training and the tips to prepare them for the next steps in their careers, maintain the focus until the very end. In these situations, plans and intentions change really quickly. So you may believe you have a plan for a team member, and then at the last minute, something goes wrong. Stay connected, keep checking in to make sure you are there and ready to pivot and support quickly if needed. And just help them through that emotional roller coaster, the transition, thinking through it, because sometimes the fear can overwhelm them. And so they need to be thinking through in a pragmatic way. Any undesired transition is hard. We know that. And if you are watching this video version of this, you'll see my mantra on the wall behind me, which is what doesn't challenge you won't change you. And you will learn and grow so much from this difficult time. So try to embrace it and know you will be better for it. You will be stronger, smarter, and a trusted leader when you love your team members. Excellent point. I would also say maintain focus. And what's important? Hopefully you now realize that it's the individuals in your organization. You can do what is right for the organization and for the team members. It's not one or nothing. It's both. I hope this will help you drive all leaders to take those extra steps if you're facing large changes within your organization. Hope this was really valuable. Thanks so much for listening. And that concludes another episode of Leadership Moments. We hope you found inspiration and valuable insights in what we shared today. Remember, leadership is not defined solely by titles or positions, but by the choices we make and the moments that shape us. Embrace the challenges that come your way. They may be the very moments that propel you toward greatness. We'd love to hear your thoughts and stories as well. Connect with us on our website at leadershipmomentspodcast.com or through social media on Instagram at tap underscore be the game changer. And Stacey Caster underscore. Remember, your leadership moment could be just around the corner waiting for you to seize it. This is Stacey Caster, and what doesn't challenge you won't change you. This is Tracy Ann Palmer, and be the change you wish to see in the world.